you back to my channel, Hard Than Apron. Today we're gonna be hanging out in the kitchen because we are cooking up some natural egg dyes for our Easter eggs. And after that, I'm gonna be sharing some delicious spring recipes. I hope you will stay tuned and check them out. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, you know what to do. It's right down here, down below. Hit that button and don't forget the bell so that you're notified every time a new video is coming your way. We are gonna start out today's fun by working on those natural egg dyes. Now, I am so excited to do this. Please let me know down below if you have ever dyed eggs with natural dyes before. I have always wanted to do this, but just have not ever had the opportunity. So I'm like crazy excited about this. But what we're going to start out by doing is we are going to be making some yellow eggs. And to do that, we are going to be using turmeric, some white vinegar, water, and our eggs. As I've said before, this is the first time that I've ever actually done this, but let's go ahead and give it a try. Okay, so while our turmeric mixture is cooking, I wanted to take a second to first let you know I'm going to be using all white eggs for this experiment because I really wanted to see what the colors ended up like without any kind of natural variations. Um, once the 15 minutes on this turmeric is done, we are going to add four eggs to this mixture and we're going to let it cook for another 15 minutes while it's cooking. Now, the difference in this is I've seen multiple variations of how to do this online. I don't know if this is going to be the best way, but I decided to try it out. I kind of took like five or six different methods that I saw people do and I mushed them into my own version. So, fingers crossed, people. Now, if you're wondering why we're doing four eggs, um, we will be taking two of those eggs later and putting them into our purple cabbage juice, and that is hopefully going to make them turn green. As I'm sure you just saw, I also added two tablespoons of vinegar to this mixture, and I'm going to be adding two tablespoons to each dye that I'm making tonight, just in case I forget to tell you again later. There's gonna be two tablespoons of white vinegar in each one of these dyes. Now, what is going to be really different about these yellow eggs versus the other eggs? All of the other eggs we're going to be dyeing tonight are going to be pre-boiled before we like dye them at all. Now, Martha Stewart said online that you should Boil your eggs for 30 minutes in turmeric water if you really wanted a bright vivid color. Well, to me, that sounds like my eggs would be rubbery and I'm not willing to sacrifice the egg for a vibrant color. So I thought, what if I let the dye cook for a little bit and then I add the vinegar and the eggs and let the eggs actually cook in the turmeric water. So they are starting in here completely raw. As I've said before, this is a total experiment, guys. I hope that it works out. I can actually see that the turmeric color is already coming onto the eggshells. I can't wait to see how this turns out. I just wanted to take a quick second to let you know, I don't know that natural dyes are the dye for me every year for my eggs in the future, only because I do feel this is a little bit expensive and I just feel like we should be eating these vegetables, it's killing me. So I have the same problem in Halloween, you know, I love the concept idea of carving pumpkins, but then when we actually get down to it, all I can think in my head is like, guys, we could be eating this pumpkin, why are we doing this? So, um, but I'm really excited that I took this experience today, not only because I'm really shocked and surprised at some of the results that I'm getting so far, and um, pleasantly surprised, but also because it's kind of giving me this opportunity as I'm sitting here and I'm working with the dye and I'm mixing the color back and forth to just kind of delve back into the past and take a second to think about what our ancestors had to do to get color, to just add that little bit of brightness to their day. You know, how much resources and time and energy just went into making their shirt a beautiful color or even their tablecloth. You know, so many of us here on YouTube, we're dyeing, like, we're like, have all these different dyed cloths and all these things that we are obviously made commercially now. But could you imagine the idea of decorating for a holiday season back in the past? So, yeah, this is where my mind is going. I'm sitting here wanting to 
delve into Wikipedia so bad and just like research dying in the historical aspect. Warning my friends, I couldn't help myself and Google and Wikipedia did not let me down. So you might have some random facts just snuck in throughout this little dying process because I always look for opportunities to learn and this seemed like a really great one and why shouldn't I share the amazing information that I have found? So here's the first little fact. Did you know that textile dyeing can be found all the way back to the Neolithic era, which is the last part of the Stone Age? That is like so cool. I would have had no idea that like different dyes were used back that far. Also, did you know in China that they have record of actual dyes made out of bark and insects and different kind of plants 5,000 years back? Okay, so I've got another random fact for you. Did you know that man-made synthetic dyes actually started to come into production in the 19th century? Which obviously led to the decline in natural dyes, but don't worry because artisans have made sure that that is this treasured knowledge that has remained out there and continued in use today. Okay, so about this time I went all of the instructions that I have seen have talked about cutting up your purple cabbage and your beets and boiling them and then using this water to then dye your eggs. Well, I have a juicer and it just seemed to me that aren't we really just trying to get the juice out? So, as I said, I went a little rogue and then things didn't go exactly as I planned so that we changed some stuff up. The green eggs have now become a giant science experiment. Make sure to stay tuned and you'll see what happens. my friends at this point the night is over for me I'm going to go ahead and clean up this mess put those dyes and the eggs into the refrigerator and we will check on them tomorrow I don't know exactly how all of them turn out I know the yellow and the orange turned out exactly as expected they finished tonight as you saw but the rest are kind of case sera sera we will see what will be will be you know um and I'm really excited to see it and to have experienced this with you guys and to share it. So make sure to stay tuned. Also, after that, I'm going to be sharing an amazing cake recipe. It is a carrot cake and it is my mom's recipe. My mom's a fantastic cook, so pretty much anything that comes from her kitchen you know is going to be great. You are not going to want to miss this. And after that, I'm going to show you a little spring tea party as well as an asparagus soup that was really delicious. Hey guys, welcome back to day two. As you can see, it's actually the next night. I just didn't have time to come back and look at these and I didn't want to do it without you during the day today. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna give you just a quick recap of what we've got here and then I'm going to rinse them off and show you our end results. So right here we have just juiced beet juice and vinegar. Right here we have juiced um, purple cabbage and vinegar. Here we have the tops of the beets that have been boiled in water for 30 minutes and added with vinegar. And then here is kind of the complete rogue mystery egg where we have taken two turmeric yellow eggs and put them into an over acidicized uh, purple cabbage juice. So I have no idea how that's gonna turn out. But when I realized that its intended color green had no chance of going, I decided to get a little weird with it. I mean, cause why not? Anyways, let's go ahead and see how these turned out. Okay, so let's talk about those end results. Nothing that really dealt 
with whole cabbage or the top of the beets. I didn't feel like they actually brought out very much color at all. Um, these are the ones from the top of the beets and these two are from a purple cabbage mixture. You can see this was actually a yellow egg before we mixed it with the purple cabbage and it actually came out like kind of a lilac color more so than that is what this color was supposed to turn out as. This was supposed to be robin eggs blue. Yeah, I don't think so. Nope. In all fairness, that one could be because I went a little rogue and I decided to use the juice instead of boil it. I'm going to admit, I think this one's my foul. This I did with beet juice, and I'm sorry, but I feel like they're quite vibrant. Um, they're not very even, but they're vibrant. Uh, these were from the orange onion skins and they are definitely orange. They're actually more brown. I should have taken them out earlier. Uh, they were in the solution for about an hour. All of these four were in a solution for about 20 hours. So even these ones three that turned out really super pale sat in that water for a really long time. Now this was actually the most impressive, I'm not gonna lie. The yellow turmeric eggs, they were just instantly impressive and done. I definitely feel like these three held their color more. This one was invariably my fault. Not bad. I hope that you enjoyed making these natural egg dyes with me. Don't forget to let me know down below if you've ever done this before. If you saw me do this and you were like, uh, yeah girl, you totally messed up other than my going rogue, let me know what I did so that if I, I do this again, I can make sure to do it better. Okay guys, it is time to start cooking and we will be starting out with my mom's carrot cake. You are gonna wanna watch this part. It is from scratch and it is outstanding. It even has crushed pineapple in the carrot cake. And that is a variation you don't often see and it just makes all the difference. This cake is amazing, guys. Now here's one thing that you're gonna notice though. The recipe that you saw at the beginning right before I started talking is slightly different than what you're gonna see me make on screen. And that is because I am going to be making a half batch because I have three people in my family. <laughs> we just don't eat that much sweets and we don't need a full cake. So I cut the measurements in half and I am going to just make a small version for us. But the traditional recipe is what you saw in the beginning. I hope that you really enjoy this. Guys, if you decide to make this, not only let me know what you think, which I'm sure you're going to love it because it is amazing but also tag me on Instagram. I wanna see how it turned out for you. Um, don't forget to stay tuned after this because I have an asparagus soup that was just absolutely delicious. It was simple, but amazing. And we paired it with a really cute spring tea party to just kind of give that extra special spring Easter vibe. I hope that you are really enjoying today's content. Don't forget to let me know down below because it helps me to know what kind of content to make for you in the future. And also don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell for all the notifications so that you can tell when a new video is coming your way. Okay, so because it needs to be cooked, I am gonna go ahead and peel and grate a carrot right now. Um, I have four right here, but I really actually didn't need that many. It would appear um, it was total overkill. I never gave the key to you Even though I wanted to And I'm gonna go ahead and mix my dry ingredients and set them aside. I'm tired of dwelling in the dark, it's just that my heart can't take it I didn't know what it would cost me when I let you go I feel alone, and I'm just singing mm, mm, mm. It should have been you Another time, another place, I just know mm, It could have been you and we are off to the mixer where we are going to go ahead and beat our eggs, oil, milk, and vanilla. After that, I'm gonna slowly add in that dry mix we just made, little bit by little, and then bring it back over and we are going to fold in the extra ingredients. I could be driving to your place, but now the crown is shaking. Could be a face, but it feels like it will never go away until we make up. Never knew how much I needed you. Mm. It should have been you. Another time, another place, I just know. Mm. It could have been you. What a crime and what a shame to let you go. Mm. Sometimes I just don't know what to do. Cause it should have been you. 
now that this cake mix is all put together, we're going to go ahead and put them into our pre-prepared pans and put them into the oven at 350 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes because these are smaller. Um, you just kind of need to check with the toothpick to see when your cake is finished all the way. So this is actually the next day because my cake was just not cool enough by the time I went to bed to ice it. And if you do not know already, you do not want to ice a warm cake. Your frosting will be all gross and nasty. So we are going to go ahead and just in the mixer, I am going to throw in um, a thing of cream cheese with some sugar. I just basically add enough sugar until I feel like it's sweet enough. We also add some vanilla and I'm actually going to add just a little bit of lemon juice to it today to just kind of help to bring out those fruity flavors in my cake. Um, once this is all whipped, I'm going to throw it into some piping bags and it's time to ice this baby. I wish you could see yourself Just sitting there on my chair I'm staring at you You don't even notice Should have told you straight away You don't have to be afraid check out this cake recipe it is totally worth it if you do don't forget to head over and find me on instagram and let me know what you think about it and it is time to make the soup for our tea party now i love the energy of a tea party for spring it just kind of feels right i don't know i wish it was warm enough that we could have taken this out into the garden but i feel like it was still really special inside at the table I'm going to start out by finely dicing up a shallot as well as adding one and a half tablespoons of garlic and olive oil to my pan. I'm then going to throw that on and let it go ahead and saute while I prepare my other vegetables. Now I have one parsnip here and I am going to go ahead and finely chop it as well as this one to one and a half pounds of asparagus that you see next to me and these three large potatoes. And all of this I am just going to kind of set aside until I am ready for it in a mixing bowl. Once my shallots and onions are really nice and sauteed, I'm going to go ahead and add six cups of chicken broth to my mix. After that, I'm going to start to bring this up to a boil and I am going to add all of those vegetables that we chopped up together. Like what's the deal? Cause I want you to show me what you feel. 
Now I'm gonna throw on the lid and I'm just going to let this cook for about 30 to 40 minutes on low and just kind of let it lightly boil until all of my vegetables are nice and mushy. But in the meantime, we are going to go ahead and make a fruit salad to go with our little tea party here. And I'm going to cut up an orange, apple, plum, we have some grapes, strawberries, and blueberries. And you will see that I'm putting this into various containers, and that is because I just have these cute little small bowls for each of us that are about one serving. And then I also have a Tupperware on the side. So in a way, this is also kind of a meal prep where I was able to make a large little Tupperware, a large little Tupperware, that's funny, right? But a large Tupperware filled with lovely fruit that was just ready for us whenever we wanted it. So this was a win in every situation. Like it is, like it is And open my heart like you're fearless Steal all the gold you can get, you can get Show me your love and leave me breathless, breathless So while I was making that fruit salad, my vegetables got all nice and cooked up, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my immersion blender and get this so it is really smooth and creamy. After that, I'm going to add a large handful of Parmesan cheese to this mix, kind of stir it in so that it blends in very well, and this soup is ready to go. We all really enjoyed this soup. If you try it, don't forget to let me know what you think. What's it like? So to go with the soup and fruit that we've just prepared, I decided that I was going to add a couple little sandwiches with this. And I am just using some roast beef and baby Swiss and some butter lettuce. And it just really kind of helped to add a lot to the whole meal, just a little bit more to make it so that we weren't hungry later. Now, in addition to this, I've also pulled aside some cream puffs that were pre-made from the store, and I'm going to add them to my little platter as well. This was such a just magical little thing for us to do for spring. Do you guys ever do tea parties at home? Um, let me know down below if this is something that you think is cool, if this is something you've done, or if you're like, yeah, no girl, I'm not having a tea party, but go with your bad self. It's midnight, oh, I'm thinking about it. So this is actually the end of today's episode. I hope that you really enjoyed it. I am really grateful that you're here and for your support and your time. I hope that you have an absolutely magical day and I can't wait to see you next time.